welcome back to Friday Reads, where we help you find your next read. I'm Jill. And I'm Julie, and I'm decked out in my Camping is Icky <laughs> t-shirt, which is a family joke. But this week, we thought it would be fun to picture, pull some books that feature camping, since it's heading into the 4th of July weekend, and a lot of people go camping this weekend. So I'll turn it over to Jill for her first pick. My first one is called Happy Camper by Melody Carlson. Um, this was published in 2020. Home is the place to heal, right? <clears throat> At least that's what Dylan Michaels is hoping as she leaves her disappointing career and non-starter love life behind <clears throat> to help her grieving and aging grandfather on a small Oregon farm. The only problem, her eccentric mother beat her there and has taken over Dylan's old room. <clears throat> Excuse me. After a few nights sleeping on a sagging sofa, Dylan is ready to give up until she receives an unlikely gift. Her grandfather's rundown vintage camp trailer, which has got... It looks picture. awesome on the cover. Sure does. <laughs> what a lucky girl. <laughs> which she quickly resolves to restore with the help of Jordan Atwood, the handsome owner of a local hardware store. <laughs> but just when things are finally beginning to run smoothly, Dylan's non-committal ex-boyfriend shows up with roses and a ring. So, Oh, boy. The happy camper. <laughs> My first pick is a book from 2018. This is The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. A group of young girls descend on Camp Forevermore, a sleepaway camp in the Pacific Northwest, where their days are filmed with swimming lessons, friendship bracelets, and camp songs by the fire. Filled with excitement and nervous energy, they set off on an overnight kayaking trip to a nearby island. But before the night is over, they find themselves stranded with no adults to help them survive or guide them home. The book traces these five girls, Nita, Kayla, Isabel, Dinah, and Siobhan, through and beyond the fateful trip. We see them through their successes and failures, loving relationships and heartbreaks. We see what it means to find and define oneself and the ways in which the same experience is refracted through different people. In Diamond Sharp Prose, Kim Fu gives us a portrait of friendship and of the families we build for ourselves and the past we can't escape. So The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore from 2018. Right. My next one is called Beneath the Bonfire by <coughs> Nicholas Butler. This was published in 2015. Young couples gather to participate in an annual chainsaw party. <clears throat> cutting down trees for firewood in anticipation of the winter. A group of men spend a weekend hunting for mushrooms in the wilderness where they grew up and where some still find themselves trapped. An aging environmentalist takes out his frustration and anger on a singular unsuspecting target. One woman helps get <clears throat> another get revenge against a man whose crime extends far beyond him to an entire community. Together, the ten stories in this dazzling, surprising collection evoke a landscape that will be instantly recognizable to anyone who has traveled the back roads and the blue highways of America. So, yeah. Ten stories about this bonfire collecting woods. Hmm. I like Nicholas Butler. Hmm. My next picks are nonfiction picks. So, the first one is The Camping Life, Inspiration and Ideas for Endless Adventures by Brendan Leonard, published last year in 2021. Packed with expert information and inspiring photography, The Camping Life is the perfect invitation to leave the noise and your screens behind, if only for a single night, and reconnect with nature. I think the photo on the cover is beautiful. From backpacking to bikepacking, camping while whitewater rafting, to big wall climbing, outdoor adventures, Brendan Leonard and Forrest Woodward cover it all. How to pack a backpack, how to set up a tent in the snow, how to camp with your dog, how to build a campfire, how to judge a river's difficulty, and critically, how to leave no trace while returning refreshed, recharged, and alive with new experience. And the other nonfiction one I picked was The Down and Dirty Guide to Camping with Kids, <laughs> How to Plan Memorable Family <coughs> Adventures and Connect Kids to Nature by Helen Olson. This was published in 2012. This will help you plan your family camping adventure. Whether you're a first-time camper or a veteran backpacker, be fuddled by the challenges of carting your brood and all the requisite gear you're going to need and what you're all going to need to take into the great outdoors. Here in this book, you'll find tips and tools you need to plan the perfect nature adventure with your family. It's humorous, irreverent, yet always authoritative. This guide to camping with kids from babies through preteens is filled with checklists, smart tips, recipes, games, activities, and even art projects for while you're camping. So a couple of nonfiction picks to get you inspired for camping. 
I can't get over the tent in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you do that, you're tough. <laughs> We this have a friend who winter camps. And, winter. I mean, he can be below zero, and he's oh out there in the boy. snow. In a tent, <laughs> yeah, that's really. So I like Nicholas Butler, too, because I have another one of his books. <laughs> <laughs> the Hearts of Men. This was published in 2017. Camp Chippewa, 1962. Nelson Doherty, age 13, social outcast and overachiever, is the bugler, sounding the reveille proudly each morning. Yet this particular summer marks the beginning of an uncertain and tenuous friendship with a popular boy named Jonathan. Over the years, Nelson, irrevocably scarred from the Vietnam War, becomes a scoutmaster of Camp Chippewa, while Jonathan marries, divorces, and turns his father's business into a highly profitable company. And when something unthinkable happens at camp, get together with Nelson as scoutmaster and Jonathan's teenage grandson and daughter-in-law as campers, the aftermath demonstrates the depths and limits of Nelson's selflessness and bravery. The Hearts of Men is a sweeping panoramic novel about the slippery definitions of good and evil, family and fidelity, the challenges and rewards of, rewards of lifelong friendships, the bounds of morality, and redemption. So, Nicholas Butler, The Hearts of Men. My third pick takes <coughs> me back to fiction. This is a Yonalosa writing camp for girls by Anton Disclafani, published in 2014. It's a propulsive novel about sex, love, family, money, class, home, and horses, all set against the ominous threat of the Depression. This book is part scandalous love story, part heartbreaking family drama. It's 1930, the midst of the Great Depression. After her mysterious role in a family tragedy, passionate, strong-willed Thea, age 15, has been cast out of her Florida home, exiled to an equestrian boarding school for Southern debutantes. High in the Blue Ridge Mountains, with its complex social strata ordered by money, beauty, and girls' friendships, the riding camp for girls is a far remove from the free-roaming, dreamlike childhood Thea shared with her twin brother on their family's citrus farm, a world now partially shattered. As Thea grapples with her responsibility for the events of the past year that led her <clears throat> to the Yonalosa riding camp, she finds herself enmeshed in a new order, one that will change her sense of what is possible for herself her family, and her country. So this one sounded a little intriguing to me. <clears throat> so those of you who might <coughs> associate camping with, like, thrillers. <laughs> <laughs> we work in every genre. <laughs> this is, yeah, who, what, what's fun if nobody dies at camp? <laughs> this is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Uh, Fifteen years ago, summer camper Emma Davis watched sleepily as her three cabin mates snuck out of the cabin in the dead of the night. The last she and anyone saw of them was Vivian closing the cabin door behind her, hushing Emma with a finger pressed to her lips. Now, the rising star of New York City art scene, Emma turns her past into paintings. They catch the attention of Francesca Harris White, the socialite and wealthy owner of the very same <laughs> Camp Nightingale. And when Francesca implores Emma to return to the camp as a painting counselor, Emma sees the opportunity to find closure and move on. Yet it is immediately clear that all is not right at Camp Nightingale. Already haunted by surfacing memories, Emma is suddenly plagued by a security camera pointed directly at her cabin, mounting mistrust from Francesca, and most disturbing of all, cryptic clues Vivian apparently left behind about the camp's twisted origins. And as history begins to repeat itself and three girls go missing again, Emma must face threats from both man and nature in order to uncover all the buried secrets, including what happened all those years ago. Last time I lied. I like Riley Sager books. Riley Sager will take you on a ride. <laughs> My next pick is a little bit of a different pick. This is Campfire Stories, Tales from America's National Parks, edited by Dave and Alyssa Q, published in 2018. So our national parks are beautiful and unique places, often serving as an introduction to the outdoors and inspiring an appreciation for nature and wilderness. Similarly, stories and storytelling can serve as an introduction to other places and foster a powerful emotional connection to nature. This book, Campfire Stories, brings together tales about our national parks. Some are well-known writers, while others are from pioneer diaries or have been passed down through generations of indigenous people. 
These two co-editors spent five months traveling and researching the stories in the book. They gathered each of these stories from public libraries, historical societies, arts and cultural organizations, museums, research centers, and national park archives. They interviewed park rangers, historians, artists, educators, local residents, all who offered insights and guidance into the essence of each place. So it focuses on six iconic national parks, Acadia National Park, Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Rocky Mountain, Yellowstone, Yosemite, and Zion. Each story includes an about this story reflection, offering insight into how the editors discovered the tale, why they chose it, and some background about its writer. Dave and Alyssa also share their own thoughts on each of the parks they visited, as well as tips on how to be a compelling storyteller. So I thought this one, Campfire Stories, was an interesting book that they put out. <coughs> it's, it's cool. <laughs> that one looks good. <laughs> So my next one is another thriller, <laughs> <laughs> Murder at Sunrise Lake by Kristen Feehan. This was published in 2021. Um, Stella Harrison thought she got away from the traumas of her past. Running the Sunrise Lake Resort high in the Sierra Nevada mountains has brought her peace, even though she doesn't truly share her quiet life with anyone. Not even Sam, the hired handyman that notices everything and always seems to know exactly what she needs. Stella doesn't know anything about Sam's past, but somehow over the past two years, his slow, steady presence has slipped past her defenses. Still, she knows she can't tell him about her recent premonitions. So far, there's been no murder, no body, no way to prove what's about to happen without destroying the life she's built for herself. But a killer is out there, and Stella knows that this time, she'll do whatever it takes to stop him. So. <laughs> And I'm ending on a more upbeat note than a thriller. <laughs> this is a book um, in our Wisconsin collection and also in our new collection. And this is From the Lookout, Memories of Peninsula State Park's Summer Camp for Girls by Kathleen Harris. For every summer from 1916 to 1948, Camp Minaga, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, on the picturesque shoreline of Lake Michigan in Door County's Peninsula State Park, hosted young girls and women from across the United States and Canada. From July to September each year, campers slept in canvas tents, told stories beside a massive stone fireplace, swam, canoed, sailed, hiked, rode horses, and watched the sunset from the lookout, a gazebo, pictured on the cover here, with a spectacular view of the waters of Green Bay. With big ideas, little money, and no experience, Alice Orr Clark and Frances Louise Mabley founded this camp as a place for young women to refine their manners, enjoy outdoor leisure activities, and learn woodcrafting. From the Lookout is an account of these experiences, a history of the camp informed by what campers, counselors, and others left behind, including letters that they wrote back home, notes from Clark and Mabley, and many pages from the camp yearbook and newsletter, Pack and Paddle. Brimming with nostalgia, this book brings to life the sights, sounds, and smells of an idyllic summer retreat. One that long after it closed, lived on as a place of respite in the memories of those who knew and loved it best. So if you're interested in a story about the summer camp up in Peninsula State Park, check out this book in our new collection. Yeah, Wisconsin camping story, that's fun. That's a good choice. <clears throat> we hope that you found something interesting to read in our selections this week. And if you're going camping this weekend, have a great time. <laughs> As always, you can find our video on our Facebook page for the Kimberly Public Library or our YouTube channel for the Kimberly Public Library. Like, comment, share with your friends. We always like to hear from you, hear what you're reading. Enjoy the long holiday weekend. The library is closed both Saturday and Monday this weekend, so we'll see you back at the library on Tuesday morning. And until then, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.